A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, FM17 specifically, a handsome young YouTuber was given the opportunity to take over a club in the relegation zone of Ligue 1 just as the January transfer window was ending. Without questioning why they were desperate enough to take a guy from Hamilton Academicals rather than, you know, a proper manager, he jumped at the chance without realising there wasn't a fit goalkeeper at the club. With the transfer window slamming shut as he arrived, the goalkeeper problem wasn't solved and a few short months later, he was inevitably sacked following relegation to the French second tier. He's not been seen in France since. Although seemingly the end of the story for the handsome young YouTuber, things were just getting started for the club who sacked him, Tor FC. They were relegated to the third tier at the end of the 2018 season and then relegated again in 2019 before being handed an additional administrative relegation by the French authorities, meaning they would play the 2019-20 season in the fifth tier. Things were starting to look up with Tor top of the league when football was abandoned for the season in April 2020, with the club expecting to be promoted back to the fourth tier when football returned. However, the French footballing authorities had other ideas, denying Tor their promotion for the same financial issues that saw them relegated in the first place. 2021 saw the entire season voided because of the pandemic, but a glimmer of hope in the form of a new cooperative shareholding society taking control expected to lead to a more stable club. Alas, the club's own Wikipedia page states, Tor is not a town fond of football, and despite the new community ownership, in July 2021, the club were relegated once again for financial reasons and find themselves starting the 2021-22 season in the sixth tier of French football. But they do now have a goalkeeper, and surely things can't get any worse. The stage is set for the return of the handsome young YouTuber to finish what he barely even started last time. And even if he doesn't manage to return Tor FC to the top flight, at least this time you can't all moan at him for bankrupting the club because, as the ancient French saying goes, you can't bankrupt a football club that's already bankrupt and has been relegated down to the sixth tier because of their astonishing financial mismanagement. Welcome to the Tour de France. Hello folks and welcome to part one of a brand new series here on the channel. As you can see, it's summertime in the UK, which means Casual Kev can return to the channel, not just that. We've got the return of the Monday to Friday schedule. So bear that in mind. More on that later on in the video, probably. But get that one. Just tuck it away in there so you're not all asking me where videos are at the weekend. This is going to be the new series, the main series on the channel, the Tour de France with Tour in Tier 6 in France. It's all in the name, really. We're going to be releasing five days a week, Monday to Friday, 4 p.m. here on the channel. I am giddy with excitement. And I hope you're giddy too. If you are giddy, make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video. If we can hit 2,000 likes on this, which is a much lower target than we had for non to Legend. It's a, it's a children's target. If we can hit 2,000 likes on this video, um, then I'm going to give away some uh, some football managers. Uh, I, I, I mean, I realise it's May. I, I can sit here and say, you can have a copy of FM23 if you want. And if you've already got FM22... Absolutely, you can win a copy of FM23. I'll just do you an IOU and give it to you in October, November time when that game comes out. Equally, if you're sat there and you've not got FM22 yet and you want to cash your prize in now, you're worried old Kev won't still be around in October and you'll just take a second copy of FM22. You can do that. We're going to give away two copies if we hit 2,000 likes. Uh, one of them will be given away to someone randomly selected from the comments section. So make sure you leave a comment to let me know how excited you are and that you want to be able to have a chance of winning the game. Um, and one of them will be given to somebody who retweets that this series has begun. I'll put a link in the description to where you can find the tweet that will need retweeting. As you can see, I'm trying to generate a fuss. I want to get as many eyes on this new series as possible because I'm very excited about it and I want you to share in my excitement. So, without further ado, let's just explain what we're doing and get stuck into doing it. So, the first piece of explanation of what we're doing um, is the Tier 6 database in France because obviously this isn't a database that you can use just from the vanilla version of FM22, you do have to use a custom database. It just so happens that is incredibly easy to do right now because if you go on to the FM22 Steam Workshop, certainly at the time of recording this video, um, the database that I'm using is the most popular database, the most popular download 
anywhere on the Steam Workshop. Even more cop, even more popular than Zealand's Moneyball. <laughs> Zealand. Oh, what a silly goose. Um, it's even more popular than the 92, 93 database, which is getting a lot of fuss. It's just, it's a very popular database. It's this one. Um, it's by Manager Online and a bunch of other folks. It's actually the the lower league French database that's been doing the rounds on FM for a number of game cycles now. And I think, um, albeit all this being in France, in French, sorry, not France, um, I think this is actually the final year they're going to be doing their database. So if you want to do a similar lower league challenge on the best French lower league database there is, this kind of has to be the year that you do it because from what I understand, they're not going to be doing this for FM23. So that's how you get hold of the database. I have tweaked it ever so slightly just to, you know, tweaks sometimes need to need to happen um, in order to in order to make a series flow the way we want it to make, the way we want it to flow. Um, and we're not using all the way down to tier eight, for example, because that would be crazy my computer would run so slow when you see the league structure in france you'll understand why we're not going all the way down to tier eight because it is bonkers down there and um, but that's the database we've used a slightly tweaked version of that um shall i show you around shall we go and have of course we're going to go and have the tour let's ha ah, he used the word tour yeah, oh there's going to be so much potential for puns in this series i'm not sure i'm going to be able to cope with it so here we have the breaking news Tor FC hire Chapman. Tor FC have today confirmed the appointment of Kevin Chapman as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the inexperienced 38. I'd love the fact I'm still only 38 in game. And he's sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at the Stade de la Vallée du Cher. As in Cher. Like Cher. Chapman has put pen to paper. I mean, I don't know why I needed to put pen to paper for this. On a month-to-month -month deal, worth not applicable. <laughs> he replaces previous manager Nuruddin El Urdani, and that should give you an idea that I don't do French names very well. Um, despite having a little bit of French in me, go back multiple generations, little bit of French in me. I'm not doing the full... If you follow me on Twitch, you'll know the line. The line isn't suitable for YouTube. So if you want to know the line, come and watch me on Twitch at some point this week and say, Kev, do the line about how French you are. And I'll do that. I'll do it like twice. I'm not going to keep doing it, but I will do the line. But this is madness. We have moved all the way to France. Last time, back on FM17, when I managed tour ever so briefly, they paid me so much money, I bought a castle. This time, I'm on a month-to-month -month deal, so they can just let me go at any time with no, no notice, a month's notice. And they're not, act they're not actually paying me any money. So I presume, not normally at this point in the series, we go and find a house in the country that we're going to be living in. I think in this one, priority number one is going to be, I need to find a job. I may, I may be coaching the local football team, but I do need a job before I can get a house. So expect some job hunting shenanigans to happen over the next few days. But we're not going to worry about that for now. So for now, it is all about the football I um, mean, here is the confirmation that this really is a club that have fallen very much on hard times. Um, my 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 boss, Jan, good old Jan. Um, I mean, his surname is literally Tool. Oh goodness me, Jan the Tool is welcoming welcoming me to Tour FC. That you're acquainted with your new surroundings. You receive an introductory welcome back. Thank you, Jan the Tool. That's very kind of you. Um, the media are predicting we're going to finish fourth in a league we should theoretically be far too good to play in. And here's the confirmation that we suffered relegation from the National 3 Centre Val de Loire last season and need to adjust to life in the region. I think that was Regional 1 Centre Val de Loire. I think, tour, I think is Centre Val de Loire a region in France? I don't really know. Um, we enter the Coupe de France in the third round and the cup at this level in the second round because we were previously a reasonably big club it says down here as a club which enjoyed its best period of success in the 80s their last competition win coming as recently as 2020 le tfc i mean what a fantastic nickname the, the tour fc le tfc um it sounds like a bank are a club with a growing history we're in tier six we won the French second tier in 1980, 1984, and 1984. 
And we finished runners up once, presumably that's in the second tier. Um, and finished runners up oh, and finished runners up in the third tier in 2006 and 2008. Runners up in the fourth tier in 2003, and we won the fifth tier back in 2020. How on earth are we in the t sixth tier? I hear you cry. I refer you back to the intro because it explains all of that. But because of all of that, because of the fact that we are we are too big to be in tier six, it does mean our facilities are really, really good. We've got a 16,000 capacity stadium that was built relatively recently, less than 50 years ago. So theoretically, it's not falling down yet. And um, we've got excellent training facilities, great youth facilities, exceptional youth recruitment. Remember, all of those are in relation to the club itself. We're not necessarily going to be churning out a bunch of future French internationals, but I would expect a lot of focus on youth development in this uh, development in this save partly because we are an amateur club with no money so i would kind of expect us to not be able to go out and spend loads of money straight away uh, but also because we've got this good setup we may as well lean into this setup i did put a poll out both on twitter and on the community page asking if you wanted me to add a stipulation of any kind to the save um and it was kind of split between French only players, youth academy only players, um, not using transfer uh, instalments or no stipulation at all. It was pretty much even between the four of them. So my feeling is rather than being really strict about using one or the other, um, we're going to try and we're going to look at the save realistically the way we do in non to Legend and just try and emphasize all three elements of it. So we are going to prefer French players over non-French players, but that doesn't mean if we need a goalkeeper and there's no French goalkeepers available. Why is goalkeeper such a sore point at all? If we need a goalkeeper and the only goalkeeper we can find is Swiss, we'll bring in a Swiss goalkeeper, but we will always favour French players. We'll always favour our own youth academy players, and I'm not going to run up a whole load of transfer debt. I'm not going to be doing my usual instalment shenanigans where we've got a £20 million budget and I somehow find a way to spend £100 million. But I don't want to say no instalments at all because sometimes the the club you're buying from will ask for instalments. If a player is listed for £15 million, they might ask for £12 million up front, £3 million over 12 months and X amount of money after a certain number of goals. We're not going to say no to that kind of deal. But I'm not going to do my usual, right, well, he's worth 40 million, so we're going to offer 10 million up front and the rest on installments. We're not going to be doing that in this save, uh, but we're not like really hard and fast rules on everything. And um, we're just going to favor French players, our own youth, and we're going to be financially sensible because financial silliness is what got this club into a mess in the first place. And we can have kind of discussions as we go between us um, through the comments section and we can decide where we want to put those lines. We can potentially move the lines as the series goes on as well and make it so that it just becomes the most realistic, most fun save we can do with, of course, the ultimate aim being to topple PSG and become the dominant team in France. That's that's a lofty goal for a team down in Tier 6. This is our current best 11. As you can see, there are a couple of real faces in this team, which does surprise me for a team in the French 6th tier. Um, in particular, the fact that there is a real goalkeeper who's played real international football. Jules Goda is a Cameroonian international um, who, of course, because we are an amateur club, we can't we're not paying any money to. So whether we're going to keep hold of somebody like that, I don't know. But I suspect I mean, he's our top own. He's our top earner on zero. Um, but we've got a couple of other real life players as well. Uh, Benjamin Tisson is a 24 year old French defender. Uh, we've got Antoine Perron, who's 29 years old. He's a midfielder. We've got David Bequelin, who's 20-year-old midfielder, um, who's wanted. And again, we're not going to be able to stop anybody leaving at this point because we are an amateur club, at least until we get our first promotion based on the tests that I've done. Um, and then there's lots of uh, new-gen players that have been generated because obviously in the database, as realistic as it is down in Tier 6, they can't fill it with a 20-plus man squad of actual real players. So the club's uh, vision for this first season, the club culture, is to make progress on and off the pitch. I'm reading that as, Kev, get us up the leagues. For goodness sake, we shouldn't be in Tier 6. This season, they just want us to finish top half in this league. My view is we are tall. We should be winning this league. The last, the last league finish we had was top of the division above. 
So I feel like we should be able to win this division this year. Um, I'm not really worrying about the Cups. Uh, it seems the board wants us to reach the seventh round of the Cup. I don't know how deep the seventh round of the French Cup is. That feels quite a lot to do. If we enter that at the third round as a sixth tier team, making it through four rounds of the competition feels tricky. But what do I know? And then within five years, they want us to build on promotion to the national three. Uh, we're going to be we're going to be up in like the third tier within five years. That's got to be the plan. A promotion every couple of years has got to be the goal. Right, let's just confirm all this stuff. We'll have our backroom meeting as infrequently as possible. And um, I will meet you on the inbox once we've saved the game. So let's have a look at what we've got here then. There's your confirmation of my um, starting attributes. I just clicked the two that were most appropriate for the, for the club that I was managing. So that interestingly gave me a Continental C license, which I was quite impressed with, and semi-professional footballer. They are the attributes... That you get by default at that level. I move the slider down to motivator because you know me, I'm quite the motivator. Seven adaptability, excellent stuff. And I am known for my Route One football, apparently. Uh, but no, no salary for me. Oh goodness me! Yes, we're hold on. See, that's weird. I don't really know why the club have got so much money in the bank and no debt. I guess that's to do... This is not... I mentioned I tweaked a few bits and bobs. Uh, this is not something that I've tweaked. Um, this is what is in the database as standard. Um, so projection-wise, financially, we are pretty healthy now. I'm assuming this is off the back of the um, of the consortium, the local people who don't really like football getting involved and throwing a bit of cash at the club, clearing the debts, I meaning that, fingers crossed, we shouldn't get in a financial pickle again. We're obviously not going to be spending any money at this tier because we are amateur at this tier. Um, so no wages are going to be spent. No transfers are going to be spent. Limited expenditure, really. So that's why the projection is looking as healthy as it does. I was a little bit worried about that when I loaded at the database, but having holidayed forward five or ten years a couple of times, um, it becomes pretty clear pretty quickly. But once you start spending wages, this money goes pretty quickly and you do need some pretty pretty smart financial management the further up you get. It might look like it's generous. I promise you, long term, not generous at all. And I am not going to be able to get up to my usual antics as part of this football club, which is a little bit of a shame. I love an antic. But we're going to be doing sensible financial management. And we are. it's going to be all about these young players that we should be able to bring in. Um, I'm hoping we're going to get a couple of decent looking ones already at the club. Um, another weird quirk is our second team plays in the same league as our first team. Um, so there, is that our reserves? I think this is, is this our res Hold on. We need to work out. So we've got affiliate clubs. Are they actually our, I don't think they are actually our reserve team, but they are an affiliate. Yeah, so we have an affiliate club who play in the same league as us. The players can move freely between. So that's nice. Uh, it's also nice that we're the senior affiliate to a team in the second tier. Um, again, a hangover from the fact that we used to be much higher up in the structure. I doubt the, I doubt we're going to be loaning many players to them. Um, and Monaco, as our parent club, could come in very handy, although whether or not Monaco are going to look to send many players down to the sixth tier is probably unlikely when they've got so many other affiliates set up but we're there ready and willing to take some monaco youngsters if the opportunity presents itself uh, but the the league structure is nuts if we look at the right what's the easiest way for me to look at the french seventh tier there you go on here so all the ones that start with regional one these are all French seven, uh, six tier league teams, sixth tier leagues. Sorry, so all of them, all of them, the top three, I think, get promoted or move into the promotion nonsense. Maybe nobody just gets promoted. No, okay, so the top three get promoted to National League Three, I think. But then you've got playoffs. So maybe we 
maybe we don't because there's no mention in there of anyone going into the playoffs, but the playoffs are there. So I think what actually happens, and this is speculation, I think regardless of where you finish in this league, you go into this playoff system. Maybe. You know what? We're just going to win the league and figure it out as we go. But let's, I mean, if anyone knows how this works and can explain it to me in the comments section, that kind of thing would be much appreciated. Because I'm very, very, very confused. Losers qualify for the final. What on earth does that mean? Why do the losers qualify for the final? I don't understand. <laughs> um, yeah, so the French lower leagues are mental, um, but we do have the majority of the best players in the league. And um, we're going to have a look around at some of these guys in a minute. There's a good example of why I didn't want to just go French only because one of our best players, one of the best players in the league is Moroccan. Um, he does have French as a second nationality, so I suppose we could have got around it like that. The chances of him still being at the club at the start of the season are fairly slim because he's not earning a salary and somebody wants him. So if they offer him £3 a month, he probably goes because it's a significant pay rise on what he's on at the moment. But that's why I didn't want to just say full-on French only. Um, but let's have a look at what we've got in the terms of uh, talented players at the club. So our best players, Maxim Mor Moron, Morin, Moron, um, who can play anywhere across the back four. Love a bit of this. Again, he's wanted. We're not going to get too attached to any because look at the level of teams that want him. I've heard of some of those teams. Maxim Moron is going to be disappearing. You will never see that guy play for us. I will never see that guy play for us. We already know about Jules Golda, Goda, the goalkeeper. Um, Antoine Perron, we already know about as well. Tilson, had we already looked at? Yes, yeah, so there are a lot of the guys who've got actual faces are quite high up. He's got a very wide jaw, this man. Dennis Deniao. Deniao. Dennis. I don't know how good those teams are. I don't know if they're if we're likely to be able to keep hold of Big Dennis. Um, but really, once you get lower down on the current ability, I'm more interested in who our high potential youngsters are. We're looking for our Mick Powell situation. So Najib Buchiba, um, wanted by Boulogne Bilancourt who is, I mean, he's a, a high potential young striker. Which, I mean, there's a lot of things we're going to have to figure out with this lot. If we have a look at our B team, we've got some 16-year-olds that have got some pretty high potential. Again, this is why we didn't want to go French only. He's Algerian. Um, presumably, again, with French as a second nationality, he does have France as a second nationality. Um, we've got Gerald Lotis as well. Some of these names, I mean, this guy's called Kevin Berger. It's my name and my favourite thing to eat. So he's probably going to be something of a favourite. And he's a goalkeeper. Oh, it's written in the stars. He's five foot ten as a goalkeeper. What use is that, Kevin the Berger? Goodness me. And then if we have a look at the under-19s, again, looking for our five-star potential, Cyril. Cyril is a 15-year-old holding midfield player. See, these are the guys who we've actually got more of a chance of keeping hold of because he's on his zero pounds a week youth contract for the next four years. Cyril could play 150 games. We could be in tier three before Cyril's contract is done. Cyril is going to be part of this team. Nicholas Grosjean, wanted by Dunkirk, can play on either side of midfield. So there is a lot of talent. Uh, Louis Ungoy, um, another one who is not French, but has got French as second nationality. He is from DR Congo. So yeah, we've got a lot of a lot of young talent at the club. Transfer wise, I have no idea what we're going to do. Whether we need to do anything. I'm um, looking at the positions that we've got at the club. I mean, it is screaming four four two at me. We've literally got two strikers, two central midfielders, a right midfielder, and a left midfielder, and then a load of defenders. I mean, all we can really do with that bunch of players is play a four two a four four two. Um. An English manager goes to French six tier and insists on a four four two, but we don't. I've not seen anything really in the way of an attacking midfielder. There you go. We've got a couple of central attacking midfielders down there. So if Luca Picard is great, maybe something like a four two three one becomes an option. Um, but I am certainly leaning towards a four four two at the moment. 
Um, and we're obviously just going to do something fairly simple and see how many players we still have available once the season starts because I expect any of these that are wanted are probably going to be gone. So we're not going to not going to get too married to any system at the moment. What I would like to do, um, obviously anyone on here, was, I'll level with you, was kind of hoping it was going to be more than one guy that we could bring in on a trial. We've got that one guy who can come in on trial. I hope you don't want any money. Um, this guy, there you go. We've already got someone who's sat on our scouted players for some reason. He can come in on a trial as well. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to have to get some scouting up and running pronto, I think. Um, well, that is your introduction to Tor FC. We don't start the season. We've got two months until the season starts. So I am going to know. I love that Vendi Herbier's foot. What a name for a team. Who is Vendi Herbier? And why is there a team named after his foot? That is, oh, it's short for that's a shame. Uh, but I am now going to go away, play through this preseason, probably lose most of my first team, hopefully be able to bring in a bunch more of uh, of players in on trial, youngsters. I mean, it looks like there are plenty of uh, plenty of free transfers knocking about. Sooner there was a player who used to play for Peterborough called that, called Suleimani. He was a striker, though, I think. I'm sure that was his name. Probably not the same guy. Uh, but I have loaded up every French player and every player based in France in the database as part of setting this up. So I'm looking for players who are going to fit a 4-4-2. Um, so any one of these that are willing to come in on an amateur contract, we will certainly be looking to bring in and then in tomorrow's episode, I will introduce you to our actual team. Let me know down in the comments how many of those names are likely to still be here when that happens. I suspect not very many. But that's your lot for today, boys and girls. The tour has begun, and I'm still giddy with excitement about it, and I hope you are too. If you are, please make sure you leave that thumbs up. Remember, there's copies of Football Manager up for grabs. Potentially, I mean, is this the first FM23 giveaway anyone's done this year? I'm claiming that it is. The game hasn't even been announced yet. Or you can take FM22 if you prefer. Um, I did mention the changes to the schedule. Um, I, I suggested there might be more to it than I said. There isn't really. Um, similar to what we do most summers, I'm just dropping down to Monday to Friday just to guarantee that I'm able to get the content out um, so videos out Monday to Friday, 4 p.m. You're still going to have the network game coming out on Sundays. And every now and again, there'll be something a little bit different on a Saturday or maybe a bonus episode for this series on the Saturday. And um, we'll keep that going probably through to FM 23 from now. So that's what you're looking for. Don't be alarmed if you don't get videos out at the weekend all the time. Uh, but if you are new, please make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on. Come back at four o'clock tomorrow for the next part in this exciting adventure. Thank you very much for watching.